Good morning guys. If you're watching this you likely have one of these, the multi-purpose cutting guide attachment for the Dremel. Whether or not you got it with your Dremel kit or you bought one on its own, I'll quickly go over how to use this and share some tips. And yes, there are several other videos on this attachment, but I'm making my own right now because they all seemed either outdated or way too drawn out. So if this video is helpful, please subscribe to stick around or like to support this channel. Alright, enough dilly dally. The multi-purpose cutting guide only fits on certain models, so check before you buy. I'll list them on the screen, so pause if you need to. The guide attachment has three parts, the base, the adjustable center, and the screw to hold it in place. Make sure the screw is aligned with the flat channel when you tighten it. The kit is usually used with the Dremel 561 multi-purpose cutting bit, or the 562 tile cutting bit if you're feeling fancy, but today I'll just be using the 561. Safety, I guess, so unplug the tool or remove the battery before setup. Take off the easy twist nose cap, loosen the collet, insert your 561 so 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch of smooth shank is visible, and then tighten it with your fingers and then a wrench. That's good to go, so we can attach the guide by screwing it on. If we loosen the screw and pull out to the zero mark, there should be 1 8th to 1 16th of an inch of the 561 visible. So keep in mind the zero isn't actually zero, it all depends on the bit you're using and how deep you secured it into the collet. This attachment can go to a depth of 20 centimeters or about 3 quarters of an inch, and I'll be setting it at a third of an inch for my first demonstration. Okay, slap on your safety equipment. I use goggles, a respirator, and earplugs. I have this piece of inch thick mahogany and I've clamped down a board to help me guide the tool. The guide has a 3 centimeter radius, so I clamp this board 3 centimeters away from my target line. Check your material and your bit to see what RPM to use. I'll be using 30,000. The 561 cuts from the sides, so don't go plunging it straight down. I'm going to start it at a 45 degree angle and then shift up to 90 degrees. This board is an inch thick, which is way too thick for the 561 at 90 degrees, so I'll make three passes, increasing the depth each time. I'll also go slow and steady to keep the pressure against the guide board to keep the line straight. Here we are with the final cut, pretty clean, a little rough, but that's expected. Any kickback from your guide rig will give you an imperfection. Next I'll use a router bit. This is pretty straightforward. I've clamped down the wood and I've set the router bit so the cutter is below the guide, but the bottom guide piece of the router bit itself is also on the wood. From there we can keep the pressure down and against the wood and can run the tool down it. I did a couple passes to make sure it's as even as I could get it. And then I didn't really like the shape of the router bit that I used, so I used a different, more square one, and it came out pretty clean. The final thing you can do with this guide is freehand engrave at an even 90 degrees and maintain a consistent depth. I engraved this with a quarter inch of depth, and then from there you can leave your engraving or do something fun like fill it with epoxy. Alright, that's it for this video. If you found it helpful or if I missed anything, please leave it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.